Hey everybody, it's Micah with Membarium, and today we have a really, really special treat. I don't know if you can tell, but I'm extremely excited. Um, we have Justin Fairman from LearnDash, and we also have Heath Smythe from Infusionsoft. So today what we're gonna do is we're gonna hear some of the latest and greatest uh, from Justin, you know, from LearnDash. And for those of you who are not familiar with LearnDash, it is the tool basically that we've used um, as a company and advocated to all of our clients for the past couple of years, and Infusionsoft is also using now Nimbarium and LearnDash together. So it's, um, you know, we'll talk more about it, obviously. There's also a webinar we did with LearnDash before um, with a lot more information. We'll put a link to that under this video. But as you're watching this, you know, I hope what you're getting from it is a mix of the really strong academic side with uh, which Justin brings, which LearnDash brings, and the really strong marketing side, which you know, Membarium and Infusionsoft put together. So Infusionsoft, obviously, you know, really heavy uh, marketing automation software. And LearnDash, uh, what I like about it, and uh, for those of you who don't know, I'm, I'm not well-educated, you know, I didn't go to college or anything. Um, and I really like that Justin brings that into the picture, that um, highly academic, you know, really high quality learning management system. We love LearnDash. I know there's a lot of other learning management systems, um, but there's a reason why we really stick with LearnDash and recommend it because the other ones, they're okay, but they just do not go into the depth. And uh, some of the new stuff Justin has to share with you about what's coming out in LearnDash, to me is some of the most exciting stuff to hit to the membership space since LearnDash itself. You know, since the course progression stuff, this new level that he's gonna talk about is super, super exciting. Um, so let's go through and just kind of introduce. So Justin, um, welcome to the call. Why don't you tell him just a real brief, maybe 60 seconds about yourself a little bit so they get to know you and then we'll introduce Heath and go on from there. Yeah, sure. Well, thank you for such a warm reception. Um, Justin, my name is Justin Fairman and uh, I am the founder or co-founder of LearnDash. Um, my background is in e-learning and learning management systems. I prior to LearnDash was setting these up for Fortune 500 companies. And uh, through that experience with my wife co-founded LearnDash and brought that uh, knowledge I had from, from those consulting engagements and put it into this product. And uh, I think as you alluded to and we'll get to uh, in Heath's overview, um, there's a, a lot of cool things that we're putting into the software that are taken directly from you know, the latest trends in the e-learning space. And, you know, it can be used in academia, but it can also be used from a marketing standpoint. And that's what makes it so exciting. So again, happy to be here and uh, looking forward to the conversation. Yeah, and we're, we're just really grateful that you're on the call because um, Justin's the real deal. Like he said, um, doing this at a really high level and then moving that into a software product that is very widely used, you know, super stable. Uh, like I said, we use it ourselves and plan to use it for the foreseeable future. Um, but next is Heath from Infusionsoft, and Heath has become a really good friend of mine just from working with him on a couple of their membership sites. And what I like about Heath and what I mentioned to Justin is Heath also has kind of a background in adult education, you know, helping people um, be able to consume the content they need to and basically get the learning from it. And that's what he's really in charge of at Infusionsoft and has been heading up using both Membarium and LearnDash to create an experience for um, and, and I believe, Heath, it's, you know, partners and customers that you're using this for, right? That is correct. Absolutely. Um, so I've been at Infusionsoft now for about two and a half years. Um, I started off as a, as a coach here at Infusionsoft where I was helping our new customers get set up in the software in the first 30 to 60 days. So that's where I really uncovered a true passion for helping our customers be successful um, and in the learning space. So I kind of took on a new initiative from from the the coaching role in helping our um, employees internally set up a progression path, um, a, a system that they could use to to grow in their role, learn the software, learn more about their role, and just become better employees all around. So that that was a great initiative that I took on for quite a while, and then I eventually migrated into um, taking a lot of those learnings that that we did and, and setting up an awesome membership site using Membarium and LearnDash, taking those learnings and translating that into building a system for our customers. And that's really what I've been focusing on heavily for the past four or five months now is building an amazing platform for our customers to get the how-to product training during the Kickstart. So super excited to be here today and show you guys what we've been doing. Um, I think there's, there's a lot of good stuff that, that I'm uh, excited to share that a lot of other people can, can take some, some good nuggets from as well. 
Yeah, and I, I appreciate your time as well and uh, Infusionsoft's you know, support in using our product. So um, where I want to start maybe is just kind of to, to pre-frame a little bit of uh, what Heath's doing that to me is really interesting. And, and, you know, Justin, Heath, you guys can jump in at any time. We'll keep this pretty loose. But what I find interesting about it is the training, for example, for the customers, it goes hand in hand with the kickstart that the customer is receiving from a coach, meaning they're going to have some coaching calls and that's interrelated to the content that they're receiving in the membership site. It's also interesting to me um, because I have a software company that, you know, what just, uh, sorry, what Heath has been kind of looking at and some of his goals putting the site together and Heath, you can talk more about this, but being able to track and, and try to correlate customer success with the training that they're taking and then obviously kind of iterate the training to improve customer success. Mm -hmm. But it's a, you know, it's not a situation where they're selling the content, at least not yet. They're using it as a value add and then onboarding tool and basically to improve the overall experience. So maybe Heath, you can give us a high level of some of your goals um, and we'll jump more into the tactics of how you're accomplishing them. But if you just want to share some of the goals and some of your thinking around it real quick, that'd be great. Yeah, I mean, like our, our primary goal with this platform is really to provide our customers with a really easy to follow structured system um, to to uh, to retain relevant how to product training during the kickstart. Um, I mean, we've we've got customers that come in that are varying levels of skill. Some are beginners. Some have little to no experience in the world of sales sales and marketing automation. Some are, in, some are intermediate and some are advanced. So what's amazing about this, this site and using Memberium and LearnDash is we can really position the, the most relevant content in front of a customer when they log into their site using Memberium and LearnDash. So our goal has been to, hey, let's figure out what what our our beginner persona really is as a, as a customer. What is what does the intermediate persona look like and the advanced? And then what problems do they have that, that they're often trying to solve during the kickstart? So we can then position the appropriate content in front of them in the first 30 to 60 days. What this does is it helps chunk down the amount of content that they're being asked to consume in the first 30 to 60 days and making sure that, it, that, that it's the most relevant as well. So that's really been my goal. And what we're tracking right now is usage. We want to make sure that customers are getting in and logging and logging in, consuming the content. They're seeing value at least in some way, shape or form. Um, so the feedback we've gotten up to this point is they love the system. They love the website um, and the, the, the ease of use. The constructive feedback, obviously, that we're getting, which is expected, is just the quality of the content. So we just got to go in, make some adjustments, and you know, kind of fine tune some things. But for the most part, we're really excited about the path we're on, and you know, accomplishing some of the goals that we've been trying to accomplish as a company now for five years. So all good things. Nice, and yeah, that's actually good to hear that the, that there's not accessibility issues. You know what I mean, or like user experience issues. Um, that's a good place mm -hmm. to be because you can refilm. Um, and if you mind sharing a little bit, so that's the context of customers. Um, what are the other contexts you're using the membership site for, like partners or employees and, and maybe some of the goals or learnings from that? Yeah, great question. So we're also using a very similar site, just different domain for our internal um, progression path, as I mentioned earlier, where our, where our employees can log in and kind of get their own um, tailored progression System so that they're consuming content that's relevant to them and their roles. Some some are overlapping, but some are are specific to their roles. So for instance, um, the, the two primary paths that we've worked on internally are for our coaches, um, those who are actually speaking with our customers and helping them get ramped up after they buy, and our support team. Those are the people who are you know um, taking inbound calls from from people from our customers who are having technical issues or have a specific question or need. Um, so the two, two different positions, um, some of which, you know, we want both to know. So we've created content that no matter who you are, when you log in, you'll see the same course. But there are some specific ones that are most that are very relevant to a coach or a support rep. So we've, we've leveraged the Memberium um, features and functionality to say, hey, if you're a coach, when you log in, we not only want you to see those overlapping courses, but we also want you to see these courses that are really relevant to you and your role as well, because we feel like that there's some importance behind that. Um, and then as a support rep, same goes for them. They, they don't see 
all the, the, the coach specific courses, they're only seeing the courses that are specific to them and their role. So that way it's a very tailored experience for, for you, the employee. Um, you, you're, you're being, you're, you're maximizing every, every minute you have without being feeling overwhelmed with all this different content, all these different tabs. You can keep, you can keep the site very structured. Um, to the employee. So we, we plan to branch out and continue to make different paths for, for different employees um, down the road. But coaches and support reps are the two um, primary positions that we focus on up to this point. No, that's great. I um, lately have been talking a lot in different environments about the need for internal training. And that was part of what also spurred this webinar between Justin and I, as we talked about some of the trends, you know, in membership sites or in e-learning and one of them was, yeah, you know, more internal training sites, more employees getting trained and the efficiency mm -hmm. of that is huge. I mean, especially a company at your guys' size. Now, what was pretty interesting to me too about when we first started working on some of this was there was some additional complexity that most of our customers don't deal with, meaning they, most of our customers, they create a site, uh, you know, they create some courses and put them into it and they want to sell those courses and that's mostly it. But what was kind of fun about working with you, Heath, was not only were you transitioning from another system, and so there was kind of some, some stuff to migrate over and some situations to handle as far as, uh, you know, for example, employees who'd been there for a while who were already at the expert level, you know, mm -hmm. we had conversations around, do they have to, you know, are we going to force them to take this before that kind of thing? Or how do we let them bypass it? You know, some of those. And then I also thought it was interesting, the uh, accountability, you know, aspect that you brought into it of, you know, not only are we trying to deliver content, but we actually need to hold them accountable to consuming it. Um, and, you know, how do we keep them from cheating? How do we keep them from saying they watched it, um, but not really watching it at the time, like having another window up and, and some of those things. So it was, um, it was a couple extra layers, which was kind of fun. So um, before we again go into too many details there, what I want to do is I want to come back to Justin for a minute. Um, and, you know, Justin, like I said, I've known him for quite a while. I have a ton of respect for him, um, especially because that academic background as well as having a killer software product. Um, but I really like, too, that he, whenever I've talked to him, you know, he's very aware of what's going on in the WordPress world, um, in the e-learning world and whatnot. And so, uh, Justin, I know you've got a couple of things to share with us. Uh, would now be a good time to jump into that? Oh, yeah, Absolutely. So yeah, Mike, as you're talking about the, you know, the trends in the e-learning space, this is something that I really get excited about because, you know, as I keep my finger on the pulse of this industry, we try to incorporate uh, what is, you know, what the trends are and what is working into LearnDash the best way that we can. So people that are using it for internal training, like at Infusionsoft, um, like you guys are doing, Heath, or for people that are selling courses, as you alluded to, Micah, with Membarium and, and LearnDash, they can leverage these to, um, for their uh, business goals. So um, when I think about in the near term what the you know, trends are in, in e-learning, there, there's two that stick out to me. So this picture here, I'm sure you're you've uh, have been familiar with this. Uh, when you think e-learning, you're sitting at your laptop or your computer, you're going through a course, be it an onboarding course for a company, or maybe you purchased a course and you're just taking the content. <clears throat> and this is still very much part of e-learning and it's not going to go anywhere anytime soon. But that brings me to the first major trend, and that is mobile learning. Now, this is important. In the e-learning industry, there's many different facets. And every year, year over year, we're seeing growth in the e-learning industry. This past year, mobile learning was the growth driver in the entire industry. So, meaning, if mobile learning was not part of e-learning, say we didn't have it, the industry actually would have lost some of that total market value. But because mobile learning exists and, you know, the, the technology around mobile learning is getting better, it's driving the growth of the industry. So this is telling us that mobile learning is now becoming more and more important to people. And it's not really that hard to imagine. I mean, think about the times that you're maybe at the airport and your flight is delayed. You know, people take out their phone, start going, looking at emails, maybe they're watching videos. Uh, that's a perfect time to reach these people for taking a course. Uh, if they have nothing better to do, they might as well take a few lessons in a course that they've purchased or if they have to take compliance training, uh, what have you. <clears throat> so this is a huge, uh, huge trend in the e-learning space. So like I said, it's on the fly 
learning. You can uh, do it from anywhere. And this is also true with tablets. A lot of times people will be sitting at home watching TV with a tablet in their hand, kind of rifling through uh, whatever it is they want to look at. Uh, it's easy to go through a course. So designing a course with mobile in mind is going to mean you're going to reach a lot more people. So this also brings up a concept called micro content. And this is another trend that's kind of related to that mobile learning trend. So micro content uh, for you know, not getting too complex with it is just content that could be consumed easily. All right, so you have maybe videos in courses and we've all seen courses with videos. And, uh, but those course videos sometimes can be really long. What we're seeing with micro content is that the optimal videos range uh, time is going to be five to eight minutes, no more than eight minutes. Eight minutes is a long one. So, you know, somebody, if they're on their phone waiting for that plane uh, to, to let them board, then they can go through a five minute video and mark that lesson complete and move on. So these concise videos, the uh, micro content is also uh, applies to text, you know, just uh, text that's really short and succinct to the point, as well as infographics. If you can take a concept and display it in an infographic that somebody can consume easily and quickly, then they're going to do, uh, they're, they're probably going to go through your course a lot quicker, and they're going to retain that content, especially if it's centered around a single objective, which is, again, really important part of micro content. A lot of times in traditional e-learning that we see today, there'll be many different objectives in a course. With micro content, you narrow that down because people are on mobile devices. They don't have uh, the time to sit there and for an hour to go through your course. They have bits of time to go through your course at different parts of the day. And so that also means taking a long course and breaking it up into multiple courses. Um, a lot of times you'll see one course with a ton of lessons and a ton of sub lessons under that. Uh, that's great and that works. And, and that, like I said, there's, there's a reason people do that because uh, you know, that's what we're used to, you were used to doing and that's what companies have been doing for a long time. But now with the mobile industry and the mobile trend on the rise, uh, breaking that up into multiple courses is going to increase the completion rates because people get discouraged. So you go on through a course, if you have 20 lessons and you spend 20 minutes and you get through two lessons, okay, you know, you kind of lose momentum. With mobile learning, it's all about momentum. How can you carry that person to the, next, uh, to the next lesson? People love marking things complete. They love finishing and seeing how far they've got, gotten in a course. If you have multiple courses, then they can say, okay, I, I got part, course part one done, course part two done, et cetera, and a whole curriculum. So that's the one, uh, the first major trend that we are seeing um, in e-learning e now. And it's actually started a couple years ago, but it's really gaining momentum. The second trend is a little bit more abstract, but it's, it's freedom, okay? And this is what I've kind of determined in looking at how people are going through these online courses. By freedom, I mean freedom of choice, freedom of taking control over your learning, choosing the learning path. So I'm going to give an example. Think about, in the United States anyway, we have high school before going to university. In high school, uh, the curriculum is very linear. Everybody has to take the same thing. Everybody, you know, has to take the same thing around the same time. They have to go, you know, from ninth to 12th grade, depending on the state you're in, I guess. Um, and it, it's very structured. And there's a little wiggle room to choose some extra stuff uh, that may be of interest. But, you know, there's these standards to hit. And so everybody has to take that exact same training. Now think about what happens when you go to university. When you're in university, all of a sudden, there isn't that structured path. I mean, you get to choose from all kinds of different disciplines. And then even when you choose your discipline, yeah, sure, there's gonna be some required uh, courses you have to go through, uh, that's to be expected. But you also get to choose within that curriculum the courses that you wanna take. So, you know, a lot of times universities, they have 100 level classes, 200, 300. And so even in the 100 level classes, you maybe have to take one, then you get to choose a handful of others. And you get to the 200, but only after you've completed those 100 and you get to do the same thing and the same thing with the 300 level courses. So the re reason um, that is effective is it gives people a freedom of choice and they can really take control of their learning. And so we're taking that same concept of freedom of choice, taking control over the learning path and putting it into our software. So now when you create a course, and this is just a screenshot from, from LearnDash, you can enable prerequisites. I think we're all familiar with a prerequisite and what that entails. 
but you can also set it to be, you know, a user has to take any of these courses. Maybe they have to take all of these courses. And this is a really cool part where you see it says enable course points. You can assign points for a course. So when it's completed, the learner gets those points. Okay, great. Now you can also, and right below the course points, you see course points access. This means that's how many points you have to have to take this course. This allows you to set up a curriculum like I just explained, like a university curriculum. But it doesn't have to be for formal education. I mean, you can do this if you have a, a coaching program um, platform or um, a marketing course, you can do the same thing and give your learners a degree of freedom on how they uh, go about their learning path. And so this is what we're bringing into LearnDash now because we see this as a huge trend. And this, the freedom of choice and the curriculum paths coupled with the mobile learning, this is what ultimately is gonna drive conversions. And in the e-learning space and in online courses, we talk about conversions as completions. Because if a user completes a course, if you're selling a course, this means you now have somebody that you can upsell or cross market to with other courses or other offerings that you have. You know, for internal training, it, it means that people are learning the processes and now they're maybe ready for more advanced uh, courses or suggestions or, or coaching calls. So completion rates are kind of the gold standard when it comes to online courses. To increase those completion rates, you need to have a mobile designed course. And I don't just mean like mobile, like you can view the course on mobile, um, um, mobile applications like a phone or a tablet, but I also mean designing the content so it can be consumed on mobile. And that just means playing to that micro content approach. And then also uh, giving that user the freedom you know, nobody wants to just be told they have to take, you know, lesson one, two, three, four, five, six, and then get to the next course and do the same thing. Open it up a little bit. Let people own their learning because when they own it, they're ultimately going to learn more. And that's really the end goal in the whole thing. Dude, I don't know if you're getting excited about this, Heath, because I'm sure you can see some use cases for yourself. But when Justin first told me about this, I was so excited. Um, and I've been even talking uh, yesterday. I talked with a friend of mine from the UK and he was talking about you know, profiling your users. And then, you know, let's say you get your three different profiles and then you can have three different paths for them. But those paths always, at least in the past, used to still be linear. You know, you now have three different linear paths, but they're still linear, you know? And this is so exciting to me because, you know, for everyone watching, uh, most of you are using Infusionsoft. So you kind of understand, you know, what it takes to learn Infusionsoft. And that's really what Heath is teaching is, you know, hey, employees, you need to learn it. Partners, you need to learn it. Customers, you need to learn it. Um, but as Justin was saying, this kind of makes that a lot more free and I think a lot more engaging for them to go in and be like, well, you know, I, won't, I only want to learn about these parts. Um, and even if they do try to jump ahead, it's like, hey, you know, you need to go get some points in the basic level so that you can understand this upper level. But we're not going to force you, you know, to go in a certain order. And, and so, you know, Justin, when you were first telling me about this, um, I hadn't, like I said, I, I never went to university or anything. And so I wasn't aware of that structure as well. You know, somewhat aware. I know people have gone, but like when you brought it up, I was just like, oh my gosh, it's like the light turned on because I've been for so long trying to figure out an efficient way to profile people and let them choose their own adventure, if you want to put it that way. And it really mm -hmm. wasn't that efficient. But with this type of system, it, it just opens up a lot of doors. So I'm super excited. Yeah, Michael, we are too. And I think, um, you know, a part of it too, is it's, a, it's becoming a trend and we're just at the beginning of this kind of freedom of choice in the online space. Obviously we had it in traditional education institutions, but uh, you know, the technology is there now and the expectation is there. So many people take online courses. And so it's, uh, you know, we're excited to, to have this. And we think it does open up some possibilities from a marketing standpoint for people selling courses. Um, and also in, in Heath's uh, examples, as he's going to go through from an internal standpoint, I think there's a lot of um, different uh, applicable use cases, especially with the different um, levels of users that he was discussing, people that were new to marketing automation or people that were experienced, et cetera. But uh, like I said, some of these things I know we had talked about Micah and Heath, and I know that you um, being the, the designer and developer that you are uh, for all these, this course and this e-learning program at Infusionsoft already have incorporated. So uh, I'm excited to see um, some of those aspects that you've put into your courses that, that made them so successful.
So yeah, Justin, I, I I appreciate you taking the time to outline all the amazing features that you know Learn Dash and Memberium can provide because a lot of the stuff that you just rattled off, I was actually getting excited, <laughs> um, getting my adrenaline going, even thinking about it. I've just got a lot of passion for this stuff, and the the Memberium and, and Learn Dash plugins have have been instrumental in 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 making this site what it is today. So um, I don't know if you guys want me to share my screen, but I can show you just kind of like what the site looks like. Um, Cause when he talks about prerequisites, um, the gamification side of things, completion rates, those are some big time bullet points that Justin had just covered. And we focus on very heavily in, in, in both platforms really. So I'm more than happy to show you guys what that looks like. So you can see that the site that you guys are looking at right here, this is our progression path site. So this is, again, what, what our employees internally are using when they, uh, when they log in. They have, you know, a, a full menu of, of training um, courses over here. They can see personal development. They've got a My Achievement section. Um, so some of this stuff, what I want to do is just show you real quickly from, from a prerequisite perspective, Justin, Justin and, and LearnDash gave us the ability to really quickly and easily set up um, a system that says, hey, you have to complete complete this course before you can take that course. Uh, it's, it's very sequential, our, our progression path is. So um, in the training, you can see here, we've got a menu of all different types of training. Since I'm an, logged in as an admin, I can see them all. However, if I was logged in as a support rep, I would only see support level one, support level two, and support level three. I wouldn't see all these other menu items here. Um, so that's again, Memberium doing its job. Um, here is where the prerequisites come into play. So we have very definitive um, a course structure to this kind of stuff where um, our employees, we want them to take certain courses before they take other ones. So for instance, the leadership model courses, we actually have a couple different leader, leadership model courses. One is an intro course. Um, one is the leadership model care course. So we want, we want our employees to be taking the leadership model intro course before they take the care course. So that's one ex perfect example of using the prerequisite features that Learn Dash provides you. It's really just a click of a mouse. You can set that up. Um, so that's something that we use in multiple areas throughout our, our progression path system um, that I just wanted to highlight. And from a, a gamification perspective, uh, we, we do that over here under my, my achievements. You can see that when you complete a course, you actually earn a badge. Um, so you can come in and see what, what your achievements have been, what badges you've earned, what badges you, you could potentially earn and all that good stuff. So um, the gamification piece, in my opinion, is very important um, to keeping people engaged, keeping them excited. That all kind of goes back to um, Justin, Justin's point of the importance of completion rates. That's one way, in addition to mobile uh, friendliness, um, coming back and, and encouraging people to, to, hey, if you complete this course, you'll get 10 more points, which will you know, give you access to this or you then qualify for maybe a gift card internally. So we've got, we've got our own system set up internally to keep people excited and engaged um, in the content that, that we add. So um, those are just a few things that I wanted to highlight. There's a lot of different stuff that I could get into, um, but I just wanted to at least show you guys some real life examples of the prerequisites and, and the gamification piece. Yeah, and a yeah, couple. Keith, uh, quick question. This, I know you mentioned you're using this for two different programs at Infusionsoft. Which site is this that we're looking at, and what's this, the main purpose of this one? Great question. So this site is the progression path site. So this is for internal use. This is our employees, um, not not for customers. This is progressionpath.infusionsoft.com. Um, it's what our employees use to um, to grow in their role. Excellent. Thank you. So he, maybe you can mention a couple of the differences uh, or, or were there differences between, you know, doing this for employees versus content for partners versus content for clients? Like what did you have to change if anything and, and how did that work? Yeah. So for, for employees, we really just, we have a, a definitive like path for them to go level one, level two, level three. Um, and we had to, 
really decide, okay, what content is relevant for coaches, what content is relevant for support reps, and what content is relevant for both. And so we would set up permission tags that would give one access um, to the select content or the appropriate content, I should say. Whereas with um, SBSA, uh, in, in other words, our customer facing training platform, this is, I just switched, switched tabs. This is the other membership site that we've built here designed for our customer training. The biggest difference here is it's really a, a one linear path. It's not a multi-dimensional path, at least for now. It's not. Um, so it doesn't matter who you are as a customer. As soon as you buy the software, you get access to this site. Um, this site is designed to provide you with the appropriate how-to training at each phase of the Kickstart. So again, it doesn't matter who I am. As soon as I log in, I hover my mouse over Kickstart courses, and we've got a, literally a path that we ask you to follow, step one, step two, step three, step four. Um, each step is, is designed to get you prepared for your next call. So this is a very much more of a linear path than what our internal training platform is, where it's more multi-dimensional or, or dynamic, I should say. If you're a coach, you log in, you see these courses. If you're a support rep, you log in and see those courses. Here, very, very one-dimensional, but a lot of the same concepts are there um, as far as workflow goes and, and, and how we deliver the content. Gotcha. And as I understand it, um, making it all the same for everyone was very intentional, right? You wanted all your customers, at least for now, to have the same experience so that, because I know like back in the day when different success coaches were doing different things, or even before that, when they called them implementations instead of kickstarts, you know, people were just yep. kind of doing their own thing. So I know a goal of this was consistency. So that was probably intentional, right? Yeah, absolutely. It was very intentional. Um, and we're also in the learning phase right now. So the, the next phase of this, of this project is for us to say, okay, we probably have different types of customers that come in. And I, I alluded to this a little bit earlier in the conversation, but we've probably got the beginning customer, the intermediate customer, and the advanced customer. So eventually, we probably will make this site a little bit more dynamic than what it is right now. But before we do that, we first want to solve for what we believe to be 60 to 70% of what our customers need as soon as they buy the software. Most customers need to know how to import their contacts. Most customers need to know the basics of a campaign builder. Most customers need to know how to send a broadcast email. Very simple things that at the end of a 30 to 60 day period, if you don't know how to do that stuff, the chances of you canceling is probably going to double. Um, so we want to make sure we, we deliver the basics regardless of who you are beginner, intermediate, or advanced, and just provide you with one linear system. Down the road, we might get a little bit more fancy with it, but yeah, we, 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 want, we want consistency. That's the end game here, is consistency. Yeah, beautiful. Um, maybe what we can jump into for a sec, uh, if I can touch back on the micro content, you know, the mobile content that Justin mentioned. I, I think I remember you saying, Heath, that one of the things like one of the benefits of having the membership site this way was that the employees were not only watching it at work, but they could watch it at home and on the weekends and things and on their mobile devices, right? Absolutely. So jumping back into our progression path here. So now I'm back into the, into the employee training membership site here. Um, that was a big um, use case for our employees. They said, Hey, this is awesome, but I don't have time to take these courses when I'm at work because I'm working. Um, so I would love to have accessibility to this stuff when I'm at home or maybe I'm just traveling to mom and dad's house two hours away on a weekend. Hey, I can hop into my progression path and knock out a couple courses. So it's been a very useful tool on uh, having a mobile friendly site has been huge for our, for our employees. So Again, going back to completion rates, they have the ability to log in and actually get some of these courses completed um, since it's, it's all mobile friendly. Yeah, that's beautiful. Um, one other thing that's kind of interesting about this site. Um, so he's using the Buddy Boss theme. And what we did and, and what I admire about Justin is even though they're a big company, not Justin, sorry, Heath, um, in this case with this site, is even though they're a big company and they have the resources, and, you know, and um, the reason to make this site very complicated, as you could see with the customer, you know, facing site, 
kept it simple. Um, and the reason I bring up the Buddy Boss theme is this theme normally would have a bunch of other functionality related to a community, you know. And so what I what I found interesting was, you know, we first looked at it and it was like, oh, there's all these possibilities. We could do this, we could do that. You know, people could private message each other. They could be in groups. And we kind of stripped it all out to focus on the training so there was less distraction. And then, you know, you kept a couple things, like the My Achievements part is a cool part that was kept. Um, but getting rid of some of the stuff that could be a distraction from the training, um, especially for a company of your size, was cool. And I say that because a lot of our users, you know, they'll be just getting started. And instead of starting with like a, a phase one, and like you said, Heath, you know, we made it this way and now we're in the learning phase to see what to do next. A lot of people will try to jump ahead five phases. You know, they'll see this and be like, oh, you know, I need X number of courses and I need a giant community and all this tracking and gamification and stuff. But the reality is, you know, just kind of getting the content out there so people can get into it and you can see what they're liking and not liking and iterate. Um, yeah, that's that's a much wiser path to follow. And, and so just you kind of taking that uh, right away, I was honestly a little surprised by it because I thought, oh, you know, it's a bigger company. They're going to overcomplicate it. It's going to be this long project. But you turned it around actually pretty quick, relatively, um, especially in, and maybe you can share a little um, you were using some different systems before and like the time to set up was much longer, right? And LearnDash really cut that down. Oh my gosh, it was four times as long. In fact, there was a level, there was a few days when I, after I had been introduced to the WordPress, Membarium, LearnDash combo, where I was actually a little mad because I'd realized how much time I had spent in, in other membership platforms trying to build something that took <laughs> what what takes five minutes in Membarium and LearnDash would take several hours in this and in, in some other systems. So um, it it has saved a, t a ton of time um, as we continue to develop and grow. It makes it a lot easier for us to pivot and make adjustments um, based on what we're finding. So that's been huge. And kind of alluding back to what. Micah, you were saying, and, you know, starting simple. That's the biggest piece of advice that I would give anyone who's trying to start a membership site, a website, or really anything. Um, back in my coaching days, I would always preach to my customers, the main thing is to keep the main thing the main thing. And I try to follow that motto and, and eat my own dog food as I move forward and build out projects myself. It's easy to overcomplicate something. It's easy to, to get, oh, we want this, we want that, we want all these bells and whistles because they look pretty and can probably do something cool. But first, we have to get true value set up. we got to focus on the customer and their needs. Um, once we start solving for that stuff, we can then make calculated decisions and add additional features and functionality as we grow and as things make sense. So to help solve a lot of problems and complications, try to keep things simple right out of the gate and focus on a version one. Um, and that's not to say version one has to be, you know, some, some makeshift dodgy system. Version one can still be pretty good. Like this is version one of our onboarding system for our customers. I've gotten feedback from our customers that say, this is, this is a pilot. This is a test. I thought this was a finished product. They, I just recently got that feedback a few days ago from a customer. That's how good it looks. It looks like a fully finished product, but it's still version one. So you know, stay focused on, on what's most important um, and what your, what your primary goals are, and then expand from there. Keith, so thinking on this site right here, I know this was for customer or for new customers and bringing them through um, the different you know, key aspects of Infusionsoft. And clearly, there is an incentive for new customers to go through that because if they complete the course, then my guess is here is that their um, chances are they're going to stick with the program and maybe not wander off or maybe get discouraged. So uh, can you maybe elaborate on things that you did with this setup with Learn Dash and Miriam and the themes and whatnot to help drive those completion uh, goals? Yeah, so I mean, really it, it all comes back to the quality of the content at the end of the day and, and some, some of the automation that we're doing between calls to drive people back to the site, but giving, from from an Membarium and Learn Dash perspective, like giving people the ability to see what they've visually accomplished. You can see these green check boxes here. When you're done with the course, psychology wise, that's a sense of accomplishment. Okay, great. Like I finished that one. Now I only have two more to go before my next call. 
awesome. So it's kind of driving them towards an end game. They can visually see a structured process of what they have and have not completed. Uh, one thing I'd also like to highlight is if I go, let's say, into importing your contacts, this course here. So inside of this course, um, what's awesome about Learn Dash is it gives you the ability to set up multiple lessons within the course as well. So maybe I haven't finished the course. Maybe I've finished some lessons though. So when I come in here, I can see, oh, so I've finished three out of the four and I've only got two more to go. So having that sense of like, okay, we're almost there, like that we're, we're on the right path, we're making progress. There's a lot of value behind that and that I've found from my customers as well. They love to be able to come in digest con content in bite-sized chunks. These are probably three to five minute videos a piece. And they can, they can leave and come back as they see fit um, and consume the content, pick right back up from where they left off, knowing that, oh, yep, looks like this is the last course that I got to take, or the last lesson, I'm sorry, that I got to take before this course is complete. So um, we've been driving usage just from a visual perspective using um, this site, Learn Dash and Membarium, by giving them the ability to visually see what they have and have not yet completed. Um, there's all kinds of other oh, that's stuff. Really that, cool. yeah. yeah, absolutely. There's there, there's all kinds of other stuff that we want to do um, to to drive usage as well. But um, you know that that could turn into another 45 minute conversation. <laughs> yeah. So what's really neat is it's like you have multiple tiers. Um, so if you go back to that main page that we were on right beforehand. You have kind of like, I really like this, what you did at the very top right here, this colored, uh, the kickoff call, the coach call, one, two, and then the you know, the campaign launch. So it's almost like you know, for each one of those, you have these different, um, I guess, action plans with different tiers, you know, courses and lessons and little breakouts and videos and content for each one of those. So, uh, yeah, I really like, I have to compliment you. This is really great that you are here, um, that you are here section there that's, uh, that's really great for somebody to see their visual progress and then to kind of you know, see what they have um, coming up in the grand scheme of things. But then if they drill down into a course to see, okay, well, I'm, I have a couple more steps to go and then I can, I can move that, you know, you are here up to the next section. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Yeah, and if I can cut in for a second, just for anyone watching um, to fill in a couple of the details of what's happening here, uh, and it, it might be something we could do to go on the back end a little, though I don't want to get too technical, but just to mention that, you know, Heath didn't do a lot of, you know, programming or development on this. So he's put in a few custom images like that image at the top. Um, but the rest of the layout is basically Learn Dash. These little blocks here with the green check mark, um, Dave and Andrew from our team at Mimbarium kind of helped add the check mark to them basically. But Learn Dash has a course grid like that. And um, built into it and the pages that Keith was showing where there's the check marks and he was saying, you know, they might come and only a few will be checked off. Right now, Heath is logged in as an admin, so it shows them all checked off. But to a normal user, they'd have like one green check mark and then four gray ones that they haven't done yet. So when he says that visually, you know, that's one of the main things they're doing is allowing people to see where they are, you know, that really comes automatically from LearnDash, like things checking themselves off, progress bars, um, the basic layout of the lessons, for example, when he goes into a course, that's all big, you know, standard Learn Dash stuff. And so I just wanted to point out that this wasn't like a giant design and programming job. There's a couple modifications to make it a little special, but it's really a theme in Learn Dash, you know, and a couple of plugins and things put together. Um, and then again, this is just for people who who aren't familiar with some of the technical details. If you know Infusionsoft, it's the tags in Infusionsoft that are being used to drive some of this. So you can have a tag grant access to one of these courses or to a whole bunch of courses. And when they do complete a course, you can apply a tag back in Infusion. So you also have the ability to, for example, when they start a course, send them a reminder in a few days if they didn't finish it from Infusion. So Learn Dash will tell Infusion or, or via Membarium, it'll say, hey, you know, they started in on this course, start this timer that if within seven days they haven't finished it, send them a reminder or maybe within two or three days, but, but just to con you know, connect the dots for a few people who don't know how all this works together. Um, I just wanted to kind of point that out. And then for a minute, touch back into the micro content. Um, Justin, when you were talking about the mobile learning thing, I've thought a lot more about that. Um, you know, since we had originally talked and even on this call, a lot of it's coming back to me that 
there's a lot of additional benefits to that. So, you know, Heath, I know right now your videos, uh, it looks like these are actually shorter. I was going to say, I know you had some longer videos before as well, um, at least in the internal side, some longer videos. And mm -hmm. what I've, what I've really been um, noticing lately with shorter videos is, you know, all the additional benefits, like you guys have both mentioned, you know, a shorter video that someone can get through quicker um, is a quicker win, right? A little bit of a better feeling getting through something and completing it versus dragging on forever. But also for the content creator, for the person creating the videos, one of the big things I've noticed since I switched to small videos is how much easier it is to replace them or to edit them. You know, if I had before a 20 minute video or 30 minute or hour video and some parts of it became outdated, it was a, it was a lot messier to update that video, you know, to cut in a little piece in the middle of the video and not just messier because it was inconsistent with the, with the rest of the video, but the time it takes to handle um, files of that size is also not a huge problem. You know, where technology is at today, file size isn't too big an issue. But when you consider the mobile environment and people's connection speeds and things like that, getting smaller videos to them is much more efficient. Meaning if I load up a five minute video because I have five minutes, I'm going to use a lot less data than if I only have five minutes, but I have to load and buffer an hour long video, right? So if I pull up an hour long video to watch five minutes, I'm going to use more data than if it was just a five minute video. And then I won't even know where I stopped in the video when I come back. And you know, a lot of those problems. Um, but again, for the content creator, swapping out little chunks is so much easier basically than trying to edit a portion of a bigger video, you know, and re-render the whole giant video after you've edited a small portion, re-upload, swap out and all that garbage. So I just wanted to kind of touch on that and then see Justin, if you had any, uh, or Heath, either one of you guys have any thoughts on that. Yeah, I was going to say you hit the nail on the head, uh, Mike, I don't really have much to add. I think, um, you know, people may be wondering, okay, where is this coming from? And the only thing I'll, I always mention is think about when you go to YouTube, um, you know, YouTube is one of the most popular sites in the world. I think it's like the second biggest search engine to Google. So when a lot of times when people watch a video, uh, be it cats or whatever, whatever they're watching, um, after a little bit of time, you start to get the itch. You start to go, want to go to another video. I mean, our attention spans are so uh, short. And I don't mean that in a negative way. I mean, there's a lot competing for our attention that the shorter you have those videos, um, you know, the, the quick wins, as you mentioned. If you can get a quick win with a short uh, video, then you're on the right path. If it's too long, uh, you know, you're, you're going to lose some learning there. Yeah, that's really how we've, we at Infusionsoft have been able to, to scale our content, our content creation work. There's only so many of us in our, our software, the Infusionsoft software that is, is, is changing every day. And so it's, it's difficult for even, even a team of three or four to stay on top of those changes, always be making adjustments if our content is an hour long. Um, so now that we've, we've kind of shifted gears and um, structured our content in such a way where it's delivered in just short little three to five minute chunks, makes it much easier for us to go back into the system at any point in time and just update one little sliver instead of the entire hour course itself. Yeah, absolutely. And um, another benefit that comes to mind is searchability. You know, if you have like an hour video, you'd have to create a whole like listing of chapters or an outline of what's in it, right? For someone to be able to find it versus these small chunks that are like, here's how to upload a CSV file. You know, that's it, basically. When someone searches that, they're going to find the video they want. And I think kind of like Justin said, um, YouTube's a good example. And I've asked people this as well. You know, if you go to YouTube, and you search for an answer to something and it pops up and there's three videos and one of them's three minutes long and one of them's 20 minutes long and one of them's an hour long, you're most likely going to go to the three minute video. You know what I mean? Like you're going to hope your answer is contained in the shortest segment possible. So you don't have to pan through a giant video to figure it out. Um, but yeah, like searchability, you know, being able to index, like you're saying, Keith being able to swap them out because I've been in the exact same boat as you, meaning I have a, a membership site that trains on Infusionsoft and yeah, especially me being on the outside, trying to train on your software, and then it would change underneath me. And then I'm like, oh, crap, I've got, you know, 40 hours of content that's now worthless, basically, um, versus now, you know, and, and I'm not, you know, pursuing the Infusionsoft training thing, but basically kind of with the small content and with LearnDash and some of these things, it's like, 
oh no, they changed one screen in the software. Yeah, let's go refilm this three or seven minute video or whatever. Um, and we're done, you know, not a big deal. It's just so much easier. Um, and the, I'm, one of my friends, um, Craig Jacobson, who's a really, really strong marketer, uh, I wanna say it was a little over a year ago now, he was really pushing mobile first from a marketing perspective and kind of his position on it was, you know, you need to, you need to make everything for a mobile world, like just assume it will be delivered mobile. So if you have a headline that's 20 words long, make it seven words. Um, and he did some exercises around that, but the point he made that really stuck with me was improving the mobile experience, making things shorter and more concise is not only good for mobile, it improves the desktop experience as well. So it's, you know, we talk a lot about mobile, but just kind of keep it in mind, like Justin said, desktop isn't necessarily going away. And the fact that this makes it better as well is just kind of like a win, win, win all around. So I, you know, I love the trends that are happening now to me. I really love because, you know, you called the second one, Justin freedom, which is a little abstract, but I think the mobile side is freedom as well. You know, people have uh, freedom of location and time. And as they start being able to choose their courses, the overall learning experience is just, it's actually getting, you know, pretty blissful, honestly, compared to what it, what it used to be. Right. You know, like go to a video that's hard to get to, you know, the environment looks ugly. It takes forever to download all this kind of stuff. And then you forget where you left off versus this new stuff is just a breath of fresh air. Um, so I got a couple of questions and I'll, I'll kind of ask both you guys this if it's okay. And we'll go Heath, then Justin. So um, Heath, now that you have built, uh, for example, this site, the customer site, um, and I know it's, you know, it's not been out there too long, but if you had to start over knowing what you know now or what you've learned in the past while, is there anything you've ch you would change? And if so, what might it be or, or do differently? What might you do differently? Um, if I had to start the project over, um, you know, I, I, I learned a lot from progression, from, from building the, the internal employee training platform. So I feel like the way we, we got off to a start with, with the actual customer training platform was really um, efficient, <laughs> in all honesty, not to toot my own horn in any way, shape or form, but it's just we, 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 we grew a lot when building the internal training um, membership site for our employees. Um, going into that one, um, I think that's the one where if I could go back, I would have done my research a little bit more right out of the gate before you build a membership site, find out what's best for you and what you're trying to accomplish. Um, and really, um, you know, see what features and functionality are there. Um, obviously look at reviews, you know, learn dash and Memberium are, are amazing platforms that are, that are obviously going to make your job a lot easier. And there are other platforms out there that, you know, might offer some other stuff, but from a simplicity perspective might not quite be, um, where, where you want it. So do your research, figure out what systems are, are, are best for you. Um, so you can make sure you're, you're spending your time building in something that, that you feel like you can scale, uh, at least for a couple of years, um, without having to, you know, then regret, oh, we built this in the wrong system and now we got to switch, <laughs> so to speak. I think that, that, that was the biggest hiccup that we've run into is just, we started out in the wrong system. Gotcha. Yeah. That's sound advice. And uh, Justin, kind of a similar question to you, you're in a different position, but I know you've got you know, your software and you have a membership site for users of your software as well. Um, if you could go back and change something either in the membership site or in, you know, kind of your course of creating LearnDash, what might it be? I think, you know, there's, there's a lot of ways to look at it, but uh, I think um, what he said, I'll, I'll echo that about knowing what is this you want to, um, you're knowing what the be all end all is before you start any project. Uh, just when we have people write us about Learn Dash, even um, I always talk, check with them to see if our solution is actually going to be the right one for them. Because sometimes it's not; it might be overkill. You know, when you talk about membership sites, I mean, do you actually need a learning management piece to it, or do you just need a little bit of content production with some downloads? Um, you know, I think if you do the research up front um, and compare that with those solutions with your objectives, then you're going to be in a much better position down the line um, for scaling that, like, like Heath was saying. So he's really nailed it. Um, knowing what it is you want to accomplish before you just jump in first with, you know, whatever solution that looks nice, because there's a lot that looks nice out there. 
um, I can certainly relate to that advice that he gave because, you know, as we started our software business, same thing. You know, we'd start with certain systems in place that, um, you know, we just did it because maybe it was the, the first thing that we saw. And we didn't really know the company or the people behind it so much. And maybe they went out of business or maybe they're gone now. Um, and then, you know, we're, we're stuck uh, having to make that transition maybe when we could have done a little bit more research. Yeah, that makes sense. And it's kind of funny when that happens too, because you get into like a suboptimal system sometimes and you're so far into it that then you're like, oh, the pain of switching is more than the pain of just finishing in this crappy system, you know? Um, <laughs> yeah, and I, <laughs> I, I know Heath, uh, he knows what that's like with what he was using before, but, uh, you know, I've, I've done the same thing myself. And one of the things uh, I've also done is I've added too many features to my membership site. You know, I've said, hey, live webinars and hey, community and all this stuff. Um, versus, and this, this is kind of a message to the, to membership site owners out there or someone who's trying to make a membership site. Um, you know, you want to keep in mind what you're committing yourself to, right? Cause so many people think, Oh, I'm going to make a program like this other guys. And they include one-on-one -on -one coaching and then webinars and you know, all these things are included in this membership site. So I need to do that. And it's like, well, slow down a little bit cause you're going to kill yourself and you're going to hate the fact that you committed to that. Um, if you haven't thought it through. So the same as like choosing your platforms and knowing what you want to do, kind of know what you don't want to do. If, if you don't want to present a live webinar once a month, don't feel compelled to promise that to your members. You know, there's, you don't have to put everything in there. Um, and that's why I like, you know, in both these cases, keeping it simple. And on the screen we're on now, you can see on the left, there's a link over to live webinars there. Um, and I believe, uh, Heath, this might've changed, but I believe that's, that's kind of a superficial link that just goes, you know, to webinars that you guys were already doing. It's not like you created them just for this. You were already doing them. You just wanted to have it as part of this overall experience so people could see, oh, I've got the structured training and I've got access to these other things, right? That is correct. We, we, we understand that everybody learns differently. Everyone has their own preference in learning. So, you know, and there's some material in these live webinars that maybe isn't covered as heavily in the recording. So we're trying to, to give a user as much value as, as possible without overcomplicating the system. My goal when I built um, the the Small Business Success Academy here for our employer for our our customer training was to keep it simple. We don't want to, you know our customers are already trying to learn something new, um, and so let's not overcomplicate the process. Let's make it as easy as possible, and that's what Memberium and LearnDash has empowered us to do. Is just that. I I can't tell you from from a positive feedback perspective. Again, I'm still yet to get one negative. Um, response from a customer on the system and the flow and the functionality of the site. They love the ease of use. That's like the number one, um, you know, pillar when I, when I ask them, you know, what did you think about the academy? That's, that's what I keep getting. And that's all compliment to Memberium and LearnDash making it easy. So the live webinar thing was just, a, you know, a, a, another tab we just threw in there to, to give them something to uh, to tap into. If you were to click on this, it just redirects right to where our, our help center where you can actually register. So nothing crazy, just another page with a link to our help center. Yeah. Yeah. No, it's, uh, it, it's nice and simple. And I like what you said there. They're already trying to learn something new. They don't need to learn mm -hmm. a new system, right? They don't need to learn a new environment. You just kind of give it to them and, and I'll give credit where credit's due it's really mostly LearnDash providing like the customer experience. You know, Medbarium does a lot of the backend connections so that LearnDash can work with Infusion. But like I said, credit where credit's due is, is that like, yeah, the user experience is really being created here mostly by LearnDash. And Medbarium can, can aid in that, you know, can um, switch things on and off. So it's necessary if you're using Infusionsoft at least. But uh, no, yeah, that, that's a very good point. They're already trying to learn something new, so just make it easy. Um, what I want to do real quick is I want to mention that underneath this video is a box where you guys can put in your questions. So anyone watching, you can put questions in below this video and we are going to do a follow-up call and answer those questions live. So if you put your question in underneath this, you'll get information about that follow-up call. If you're on our list, you'll probably get that information anyways, but um, just wanted to touch on that real quick. So if you, if you have had questions come up or if you have questions now, 
um, make sure and put them in under that under the video if you haven't noticed that questions box yet. And um, let's let's go ahead and just ask, uh, you know, Heath and Justin, um, what else do you guys have to share, if anything, or any other kind of last thoughts um, as we're coming to an end here? And we have plenty of time, so go ahead with whatever. But yeah, is there anything you guys are thinking of and want to get out, um, Justin? Yeah, sure. I think there was there's kind of a hidden gem that Heath had mentioned um, in all this conversation. I want to pull out, and you asked the question earlier, Micah, about like kind of you know what do you know now as you go into creating a you know their product or, or membership site or what have you, and that is listening to the people that are actually taking the content, the people that are engaging with your site. I mean, Heath said earlier that the the new customer onboarding was just kind of a pilot. And now he's collecting that feedback and he's going to improve the course of the whole platform, maybe add some of those community features if, if people are asking for it. But if not, there's no need to. So I think, you know, getting something out there that looks good, it's streamlined and it meets that key objective. And then, you know, putting your ear to the ground and listening and, and seeing how people are using it, what their pain points are, how you can adjust it to increase your conversion rates. And then that's how you ultimately create a learning experience uh, on a membership site that is going to ultimately um, convert or you know, have people complete the course and learn the content. Yeah, I, I actually want to piggyback off that because I just I had a meeting with some of my colleagues yesterday and um, you know, we talked about how easy it is to get focused on the outcomes that we seek internally. Every company has got their own internal metrics that they're trying to hit. They're trying to lower cancellation rates you know, decreased churn, you know, we, we have all these other internal um, w words that we use for, for specific metrics that we're trying to improve every day. But what really matters is if you focus on what the customer wants and needs, the, the internal metrics will come with that. So, you know, this platform, as we design this, we're using this to say, hey, like disregard what we're trying to do internally, Mr. or Mrs. Customer. What what do you need? How can we help you be successful in the first thirty to sixty days? Because we would hypothesize that if we can if we can successfully do that for our new customers coming in the door, the other metrics will just come. And so that's that's the approach I've been taking as I build this is just focus on the customer, focus, it's all about them, it's not about us. They're the hero, we're just here to serve them and help them become the hero. So that's the biggest piece of advice I would give any company moving forward and that's, that's really what I've learned here at Infusionsoft is focusing on the customer is the number one important thing and you can take that exact same mindset when building a membership site as well. Yeah, absolutely, like just intention focused, right? Um, mm -hmm. So, We'll put some links under the video, but um, just in case someone's watching this, you know, who's not using Infusionsoft, um, like I mentioned earlier, it's obviously a marketing automation software, but um, we'll put something below the video, you know, to connect with Infusionsoft if you want to ask them questions or look into getting it um, if you're not using it yet. We'll also, of course, put information below this um, for LearnDash so you can get started with that. And like I said, there's a questions box too where you guys can ask us and then we'll get on and answer those live about a week after um, this video is released, but um, I just want to thank you guys. So Heath and Justin, um, you guys are people that I really, really respect in the learning space. And, uh, you know, obviously Heath, you're doing cool things here. Justin, your software is always getting better. And I really appreciate that. So guys, thanks for coming on. Really appreciate it. Thank you, Micah. I mean, all the pleasures on this side, everything that you and Justin have, have provided us here at Infusionsoft, we're extremely thankful for and look forward to continue to learn and grow in, in, both, in both plugins as, as we move forward. Yeah, it really, really was great seeing you here set up. And uh, Micah, thanks for, thanks for getting us together. This was fun and uh, very informational. So again, for those of you watching, go ahead and put your question in the box below, anything you want to ask. And we'll send you some information about a follow-up call where we'll answer those for you. But thanks again. Check out the links below the video, and we'll talk again soon.